Hi everybody, this is Paul Schmutzler for Streaming Media Producer. Today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to use Adobe's Essential Graphics panel that is built into After Effects and Premiere Pro now. This is a great feature that they introduced last year, but they've built on this year, including the ability to download and install either paid or free motion graphics templates. And those are available now through Adobe Stock, which they've really been pushing heavily and have made a lot of strides in both still images, video, um, all the way up to 4K, and now motion graphics templates. So it's a really powerful panel that you may not be taking advantage of. Um, I was hesitant to start using it initially because I didn't like the idea of everything being tied even more so into this single ecosystem. But the more I used it, in fact, using it on this particular project I'm going to show you, which was an actual project I did for a client, I found it was just invaluable and I really saw how much it could improve my workflow. So let me walk you through what I did. I was asked to create a lobby loop video for a bank chain and basically it's just a very generic video. It's going to display on monitors and lobbies in their different locations around the state and it was just going to be information about a lot of the different things that are offered to people that bank with them. So for example, mobile banking, uh, their mobile app, online banking through their website. Those are the kinds of things they wanted to promote to help people know all the tools that they had at their disposal as customers of that bank. So we created basically a template, which is going to be a background video or actually it's a still that's just going to pan. Um, and then there's a main heading, which is bullet point one, as you can see on the screen. And then there's text that changes under those three points with the, ch the blue check marks that you'll see below. And this was actually styled after some other graphics that um, one of my colleagues had created for them that were still graphics like for uh, brochures and posters and things. So we tried to match um, the way these motion graphics looked so that they would look uh, similar to what people are already used to seeing in their other marketing materials. So since all it was was a whole bunch of bullet points with a very kind of bland text, there really wasn't a whole lot of reason to go crazy with effects. So what I did was I built a simple set of effects that would be used on one page of bullet points and then using the essential graphics panel I'm able to easily change those in Premiere Pro later without having to spend a ton of time in After Effects and then rendering everything out um, with an animation codec to bring into Premiere Pro later. So let me just show you what I built here first. You can see my different um, canvases here. Each one is a different set of bullet points that has a different heading. So we have e-statements, Bazing, which is their own product, and then some other generic ones, internet, mobile banking, mobile deposit. Um, what I did was I created a background graphic that would be the same for the entire series for that particular product. For example, this is Bazing. So Bazing and this corner graphic are not going to change. And they actually animate in. I'll just show you that real quick. You can see the blue slides in, things fade on. Uh, but then on top of that, you have this separate one, which is just the bullet points and the bullet points themselves are completely independent. So I actually am bringing two graphics into Premiere Pro, but only this one with the bullet points is editable. And you see I have my Essential Graphics panel already open. It has a drop down that shows all of the ones that I've created, so you can easily switch among them. And then all you do is you dictate what properties you want to be able to be changed in Premiere Pro. So this is good if you're working with someone else and you're the motion graphics designer and you don't want them to accidentally mess something up, you can say, okay, I'm going to limit the editor to only being able to change the text and nothing else. So that's essentially what I did, except it's for myself, so I'm not worried about messing up my own graphics. Or maybe I should be, I don't know. Anyway, so you have your uh, bullet points here, and then I actually typed more into this one just so I could make sure that it would overflow and not, um, not uh, run out of room in the text box. So I have three points, the check mark, and that's actually animated as well. You can see the check marks fly in, the bullet points fly in, and I did put a little blur on them to make it a little more natural movement. But even with the animation, it retains all that in Premiere Pro, and all I have to do is change the text, and voila, I have custom graphics that I can easily replicate throughout my timeline. So I do this once here in After Effects, and then I would export this motion graphics template, which essentially uh, sort of repackages it in the background for Premiere Pro to be able to use. So switching over to Premiere Pro, you'll now see that in the Essential Graphics panel here, I've got my bullet points and then I have my basic title as well. 
So they will essentially immediately show up in your library in the other application once you sync it or export it from After Effects. From here, all you need to do is find what you need and drag it to your timeline. It's very similar to if you bring an After Effects file directly into Premiere Pro. It's an unrendered media file that doesn't play smoothly necessarily. It has to be uh, rendered before to play smoothly. But you can see my bullet points are here just like I showed you before. They've still got the placeholder text in, in there just like they showed in After Effects. And then to make changes to them, all you do is use your effects panel, just like for any other effect you would apply to a video clip. So you select that clip, go to effect controls, and then you can drop down all these new effects here under motion graphics template and just change your text. And it changes on the fly as we type as soon as I go to a new blank. And then just to show you how the overflow is set up, I'll just copy and paste this so you can see that it will actually contain that. So in After Effects, I have to make my text box large enough to fit the text that I know I'm gonna need. So in my case, I had to do some trial and error to move the arrows to the right points and then extend those text boxes. I think I ended up um, allowing them to hold up to three or four lines of text so that it wouldn't be cut off. But anything I need to change is very easy to do here in the, effects, in the effect controls panel. And then if I need to replicate it, I can just copy and paste, or um, I can put it also back in new from the Essential Graphics panel. So for now, you can see that it's retained those, but this now has its own independent effects that I can change independent of the other one. So it makes it super easy to make a bunch of things over and over again. And the only thing I did differently was I created an ending animation in Premiere Pro because I didn't know how long I wanted each of these to be on screen, so I let them be longer than they needed. You can see these are actually the text templates that I used for the uh, final output. They're much shorter than I have here, so these just go indefinitely with the, the text static on screen, and then I just brought it into the length I needed, and I created a, uh, a zoom animation just to take the text off screen, and then this next one will kind of come in over top of it as the other one zooms out, and you'll see that here in the final output. The first one will begin to zoom off here shortly into the ether, and then the new ones slide onto screen. It makes a nice smooth transition between the two. The other great thing about the Essential Graphics panel is the ability, as I said, to pull in motion graphics templates directly from Adobe Stock. You'll see that here on my left, I've actually brought up my Libraries panel, and I already imported from Adobe Stock a free motion graphics template. And the way you do that is just by searching here, um, I typed in lower thirds just to kind of limit what I was finding. And then all I had to do was click on the what's essentially the purchase button, but since it was free, it didn't charge me anything, of course. Uh, there are a lot of free ones out there. Some of them are really good. Um, but as with any free templates, you'll find a lot of people are going to be using them. So if you need something unique, you'll have to buy something or create something your own. But all I need to do, again, is just like using from my Essential Graphics panel, drag it onto my timeline and then I can immediately start editing by selecting it and using the effect controls. And you can see here, this one can, comes with a built-in toggle for a different color scheme. I think that's a fantastic idea. I mean, just imagine the amount of time you would spend trying to custom change each of the colors and try to crack open someone's After Effects file and try to nail down all the different properties that you need to change to convert this to a dark color scheme. So that's a great use of these things. And there are a few other effects and of course each one you download may be a little different because these are individual users and artists uploading them um, for download. So that's an example workflow of how to take advantage of the essential graphics and motion graphics templates workflows that are brand new in Premiere Pro and After Effects 2018.